Uncle Doug. Yeah, where'd you go? Well, I'm I'm over here, but I, I have a I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, okay. What are all these piles of clothes laying here about? <laughs> and you have some pride in how you live? Well, you're not Uncle Dan after all. Where did all the party guests go? Yeah. So uh, pick, Uncle pick Dan has yourself. disappeared. Where'd he go? Ooh. Yes, gentlemen. There's a lot of laundry. That's correct. <laughs> Free Pra-y- clothes. Brace yourselves, because my segment today is going to be. Eschatological. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, not to be confused with scatological, which would be an even more fun. Uh, well, we'll thing. we'll find ways to, to we'll, make I'm, it I'm sure it will be both. I'm sure it will be both. We'll get um, some poop in there. Eschatology, as you both know, is the study of the end in times. Mm. Yes. The final days. Yes, the last scene. The the last act. The yes, the, the final dirt. curtain. In most cases, it's the first act of a terrible film. But the, yeah, the dirt nap. <laughs> oh my god! So yes, we're going to talk about the rapture. Um, it is, it's a thing that has confused me ever since I first like tried to do any looking into it. Yeah, because them as believes in it are usually the most. Like Bible thumpingist, bi- biblical literalist guys you'll ever meet. Hmm. Yeah, and it's not in the Bible, right? <clears throat> so not in any like expressly laid out sort of way. You're saying that what bi- some believers might believe is not in the text. Weird. Holy shit! Who would have thunk it? Who would have known? Hold on. <laughs> right? Yeah. Are we all ready for this? We have changed the editorial opinion of the how to. <laughs> um. This was a this was a a system of beliefs started a, as near as I can tell uh, in the 18th century hmm. uh, with a couple of puritanical creatures, a father's uh, creatures. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that too. But we'll but we'll call them preachers. A um, puritanical ossifrage. <laughs> yes, exactly. And his friend, a Billy Goat. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, a father son team. Uh, who may not have liked each other very much, named, and I, these may be my favorite names that we've ever spoken on the on this podcast, Ooh. Increase and Cotton Mather. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, Cotton Mather. <laughs> yep. Uh, and his papa, Increase. Um, I love that. I love Increase. Right? That's a great name. Isn't that an amazing name? Yeah. Um, they kind of started this whole thing. By the way, Cotton Mather you, is a name you may have heard of because he was sort of uh, one of the guys – largely blamed for the Salem witch trials and stuff. He kind of popularized That's the right. idea that there was that there was witches about and yeah. that they were bewitching the folk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a lot of ladies killed because of him. That he saw Hester Prynne <clears throat> up to no good. Right, yeah, oh, exactly. I saw Goody Proctor with the devil. Anywho, um so these two guys sort of started the thing. Then there was a guy named John Nelson Darby. He was British uh and he uh uh, he was a group member of a group called the Plymouth Brethren, and they were hardcore dudes. And they came. Nothing so, good comes from that name. I, no, <laughs> that I've never heard before. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but he really popularized uh, and and sort of disseminated the idea of the uh, of the um, the rapture. Couldn't think of the word. Uh, and then and and then it kind of came across the, the pond here to the states from him, and. And then it, you know, it there were, it became popularized by by different people who interpreted the Bible differently, and now it's just a bunch of ding dongs making Christian movies. You know, I'll tell you what though, if I had a if I had to wear a hat buckle, I would look for a myth where that could miraculously not be on my head anymore. <laughs> uh, I think hat buckles are coming back. <laughs> you mark my words. You're free of buckled uh, <laughs> accessories. Headgear. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, in episode 18, I think it was, we had Christopher Stroop on to talk about literal fucking thing, rapture anxiety. Yeah. That mm. there are there were people who grew up and their mom didn't pick them up from soccer and they're like, well, fuck it, it's over. <laughs> it's done. I'm done. I, I didn't make the cut. Like literally going home to an empty house and having a panic attack. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So this is, this is how toxic and dangerous a stupid idea can be. Mm. Well, so let's talk about what this idea is because yeah. – uh, I mean, there's a the, there's a popular culture understanding of it that's pretty darn close to what to what we're dealing with. Um, how why don't you guys describe sort of what your image of how how you understand the rapture is, and then we'll go through 
what it actually. I can state it simply: a world without Christians is yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Heaven <clears throat> and free clothes everywhere. That's right. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's you know, it's been there have been how many rapture movies, rapture themed movies, right? So that's my vision: is buses crashing into to traffic <laughs> it, and planes it, without pilots, incredibly and, low production values. That's and, right. Like, right. Kind of a sad, poorly lit Nicolas Cage. Yeah. And David A.R. White around try- an airport. David A.R. White trying to find his wife. Right. <laughs> it's God turns on his holy vacuum cleaner and just foop, 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 sucks up all of the uh, all of the Christians yeah, all yeah. at once, sort of thing. And uh, there's just piles of clothes everywhere. Yeah. And that's basically it. Well, the yeah. clothes thing is that's a question. Who knows? Does he take the clothes? Maybe you get to keep your clothes. I don't know. I see. Uh, I think he should leave the poo because you don't want any impurities in heaven. In heaven, so there should just be piles of shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your clothes. I got news shit. for you. You get you get into a Christian church and it's a bunch of piles of shit. And, uh, <laughs> in Uncle Mark's rapture, you keep your clothes, leave your shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically that's what we're talking about. Now there are several points in Christian eschatology because okay, the Bible does talk about what will happen in the end times, as we remember from mm-hmm. Uncle Doug's. Beautiful and totally <laughs> comprehensible uh, yes. tour through Revelation. Careful examination of the book of Revelation. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Which we all then understood yeah. every word yes. of. Not your fault. <laughs> uh, then, so, so, and but it's not just that. There's, a, there's stuff in Matthew. There's stuff in, uh, in the epistles of St. Paul. Mm. There are all these things talking about what will happen in the end times. Now... We can get to, we, well, I'll get to that later. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, their basics are that there will be a, uh, a, point, a, a period of tribulation, usually seven years. Mm-hmm. There will be a second coming of Jesus, and I'm going in no particular order right now. There will be a millennium, of, which means a thousand years, or maybe it doesn't mean a thousand years. Maybe that's just a, a, a metaphorical time period. Mm. But there will be a period of, uh, of peace. Yeah, where God Earth. comes back and reigns uh, it, yes. Jesus. And then there will be a final judgment. Right. Um, now, the, the order in which you place these things and where you put Jesus coming back in that order – changes how you view uh the the rapture there are what we call uh post so so the tribulation yeah. which is the 7 years of really shitty times when the the antichrist comes in as and, we know administered by the united nations <laughs> correct <laughs> yes. correct though weirdly that that organization is not mentioned by name in the bible you'd think but it's not well it is if you take the first sentence of the fourth paragraph to the ninth verse right and you invert it and then which is called that. which is called which says united and then there's another one that says nations right and <laughs> multiply that by begat right and then <laughs> obviously you get to a u <laughs> And later an N. Right. right. So th- Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> Take that point, Dexter. <laughs> Carry the Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Don't add us. Uh, so so <clears throat> there are sort of four major views on how the final days will go. There's the post tribu or when we're talking about uh, a rapture. There's the post tribulational premillennialisms. So they say that there's a tribulation, then the second coming, then the millennium. And then the second, second coming. The second, second coming I, is what I call uh, the final judgment because Jesus comes back and then judges everybody. Or the third coming. Or, well, yes, exactly. <laughs> Which is, you know, is, is pretty impressive. Certainly at my age, it's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you've got to be in your early 20s. It's a myth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a myth. Yeah. Uh, pre-tribulational, uh, there, there's, so, so there's a second group of pre-tribulational dispensational premillennialism. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, dispensationalism... I hate that I have to know what any of that means. Just, you don't. Just yeah. go ahead just and hit saying. me in the head with a hammer. <laughs> <I'm going laughs> get this to. over with. Uh, so that means that the rapture is going to happen pre-tribulation. So... This is this is what this is where the the, Left the behind largest series, swath right. of yeah. of rapturists live. Right. Yeah. So before the tribulation, all the good uh, Jesus lovers get sucked up to heaven, and then there's the tribulation, which they don't have to s- sit through, although they're going just to the clouds and the air. So 
Maybe they're looking down on it. Uh. I, I would imagine they're bored. <clears throat> uh, and well, there's, then, a, there's a real vengeance, a real idea of schadenfreude and vengeance tied up in right. the Christian idea of the rapture. So they're probably watching. They're and enjoying. Yes, exactly. They're watching as the, it's their favorite show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then there's the tribulation, which is the seven years, and then <clears throat> the second coming of Christ. But it's the second second coming because the first com- second coming is the rapture. But the second second coming, he comes back. So he comes back for the church. This is how they talk about it. He comes back the first time for the church, meaning he sucks them all up. Uh-huh. And then he comes back with the church, meaning he brings them with him. Boom. To fight the, the good right. fight. Oh, yeah. They defeat Satan. And then you got your millennium and then your last judgment. I can't wait to face an army of chubby, elderly, <laughs> John Hagees and, you know. And women named Karen. Yeah, with, who, who want to talk to the manager. <laughs> right. With a sword. <laughs> <laughs> They've got that haircut. So their, their clothes don't go with them, but their ability scooters do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. And their, their diabetes goes with them. Their CPAPs go with them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. And then we've got like post-millennialism and amillennialism. We don't have to talk about those guys. Anyway, uh, so yes, the vast quantity of, of these people believe that before the tribulation happens, they all, they yeah. all yeah. pop up into the heavens. And these are people with driver's licenses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> children. Yeah, under a certain age. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, yeah. what I'm saying is these are these are... This is a huge swath of the American electorate. Yep. Mm-hmm. This is pr- almost, this is probably 90% of every Republican <laughs> office holder in this country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, the others are Mormons and Trump. Right. <laughs> um, well, and we should mention that uh, this is not something, this is not a belief, the rapture is not a belief that is shared by Catholics or Eastern Orthodox. Right. Or most even of the Protestant Christian sect. Yeah, this is pretty exclusively evangelical, right? Largely, yeah. yeah. That's what it's come to. <clears throat> um, it it it, ba- it ba- bounced around in different sects. A lot of people tried it on, decided it didn't fit, n- left it behind. Left it on a pile on the ground? Yeah. Left it behind. Yes, exactly. They, it was left behind. Um, so where does this come from? I think most, most people are too self-conscious to believe in this. I know. Exactly. A, a, a naked eternity is just... <laughs> unthinkable <laughs> and i include myself in <laughs> exactly okay uh i'm gonna jump to where in the bible we can account for this and you guys tell me how well these bible qu- passages uh lead you lead your brain <clears throat> to this conclusion sure no whammies <clears throat> i'm gonna start with First Thessalonians. This is Paul's epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter four. And it was the it was the best Thessalonians. Let's be. Frank. I'm going to call it one Thessalonians. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, the first anyway. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the sequel uh, sucked. So I'm going to go. I'm going to jump down to let's see, midway through cha- uh, verse sixteen. Um, I'm, I'll start with verse sixteen. Uh, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the, uh, of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead, of, the dead in Christ will rise first. That's the dead first. Okay. Yeah. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. All right. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Okay. In the air. Ta-da! That's it. That's basically it. So first zombies. Yeah. Then they get beamed up. Then they get beamed up. They're really crossing the genres here. Right. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. Um, well, that's that's not nothing to work with. Hmm. It's not nothing. There's some, um, there's, there's some tissue there you could build. I suppose. Uh, uh, a crazy idea out of. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy idea. Yeah. This right there. So uh, it doesn't really – so Thessalon- first off, that particular uh, scripture doesn't really mention uh, where in the timeline this happens, um, except that the Lord co- is coming down from heaven. So we know that uh, – and it talks about, um, you know, those who, earlier, those who have fallen asleep with the Lord. I don't know what that means. One assumes die. I don't know. You fall, anyway, as- you fall asleep after the fourth coming. <laughs> You just wiped out. <laughs> who, who can even? Stay I mean, awake you should call that. an Uber, but can I just get just? I need an hour's sleep. Yeah, just right. just let me chill for a minute. Get me some electrolytes. Let I'll, me rest. I'll make you breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> just let's let's just let it go. Um, 
there are other passages. Uh, I'm going to go to Thess- two Thessalonians <laughs> chapter one, uh, which verse six says, uh, "God is just; He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you, and give relief to those who are troubled, uh, and to all of us as well." This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. Um, okay. All right. I don't know what that tells us. Uh, not Nothing? It's not really that useful. No. Uh, Matthew. Matthew's interesting. Uh, this is uh, Matthew chapter 24. Uh, this gets fairly specific. Immediately after the tribulation of those days... Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Uh, Skipping ahead a little bit. And he shall send his angels uh, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So they take this to mean that everyone who has been raptured will be gathered in that final day after the tribulation, and then they'll go down and uh, and fight the good fight. All right. Um, I will point out that just a couple of verses later, it says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass mm. till all these things be fulfilled. Right. Whoops. So, bit of an oopsie. <clears throat> right. Um, probably best to ignore that one. Uh-huh. Well, any anytime you're writing a, a really terse narrative, you want a tick and clock. That's you right. do. Right. You, you want do. a tick and clock. But now they're stuck with the ticking and, clock. And you know what the Bible could really, really use? What's that? Is a string section. Like <laughs> it is just yes. all horns. It's all horns. <laughs> he well, he likes that trumpet. Yeah. Um and also back in those days they'd really they they were they were starved for good musical instruments. Apparently. Um it is interesting. Um the 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 whole timeline thing. Obviously, we've had lots of predictions as to when this was going to happen. So many. <clears throat> Which is interesting because there is scripture that specifically says uh, no no one, not even the angels, not even uh-huh. the heavens, right. know when this will happen. Yeah. So interesting that everybody would decide that they, were, that, that they would know when this would happen. But right. the angels don't. Including <laughs> William Miller, uh, as we discussed, uh, who led to the Adventist movement. Um the Jehovah's Witnesses had several dates that they t- tested out that yeah. were going to be the time that this happened. Uh, her- most recently, Harold Camping famously, well, his first one, he predicted it uh, September 6th, 1994. That one didn't work out well. Yeah. But uh, he, the, and he's a radio evangelist uh-huh. for those who don't know Harold Camping. So couldn't he have just pretended to get raptured and just turned the radio just, off? And stop that's what I would have done. Yeah. Just go into hiding. Now my name is. Uh, George, whatever, yeah. and then, yeah, start a new life in Hawaii. Nope. Then, but what he did do was say, sorry, got my calculations wrong, because this was based on on numerical. As, m- as they all do, they're like, oh, biblical maths. I didn't carry the six. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, right. It started on the wrong day. I So it's going to be, so he revised to May 21st of 2011. Whoa. Um. And if you'll recall, I don't know if you remember this, even here in Salt Lake City, there were billboards up that were like, yeah, the rapture that. is coming on this date. Are you ready? Are you it? prepared? Like, this was all over yeah. the country. Because you want to get your beach bod ready before the rapture comes. Right. I kept thinking, well, put your money, all of you rapture thinkers, put your money where your mouth is and give it to me because you <laughs> believe you won't need it. You know, I, there was an NPR story uh, that morning. Mm-hmm. Or the next day, I guess, after one of his last prediction, and there was a guy who seemed completely, you know, sane and well spoken and whatever, passing out things, uh, pamphlets in Times Square, saying, "My God, it's today! It's today! You guys, you've got to repent." He had gone to some nursing home to say goodbye to his mother. Oh my God! He had sold uh, he sold his house. Mm-hmm. He'd given away everything. That's he crazy. was out. Yeah, and, and uh, they followed him as the panic started to set in. And yeah. it, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So how did he take the, the lack of news? Uh, he, was, he, he was devastated and oh. horrified, and he was now broken homeless. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Um, <clears throat> the her, camping, by the way, for his part, claimed that a spiritual judgment had occurred yeah. uh, on that uh. date, um, but that the physical rapture, as he now realizes with the math, obviously... 
would be on October 21st of that year, which then, as we all know, the Earth actually was destroyed in right. 2011, <laughs> uh, October. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, another Christian numerologist named David Mead uh, put forth the date of uh, September 23rd of 2017 as uh, using astrology as his guide. Oh, well. It's it just keeps happening. Yeah, and there's it, uh, do you guys remember is it Jack Van Imp Van Impe? Yeah. You remember yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and his lunatic wife oh, they were had great. their newscast. Yeah. And they would just read random news stories and he would try to square it with yep. you know, like a, a a a goat with two tails was born in Right, you know. And he'd quote Chile. some scriptures and spin it. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And it's all all of it, every little bit of it is uh, anything that happens can be evidence of the coming th- Tribulation yeah. that should have happened four thousand generations ago. Right. right. Uh, so, so yeah, that's it. It's not much. It's a pretty thin thing that these people hang everything on, hang everything on, and believe is going to happen in their lifetimes. Yeah. Well, and believe it. I mean, really believe it. I mean, uh, LaHaye and that other guy who wrote uh, the Left Behind series. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the best-selling series of books ever. And that that actually is kind of what exploded it in yeah, exactly. current times. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those things where it's like, okay, but you guys know that if you consult your book, it's not there. It's so thin. Yeah. Well, and and you can interpret the same uh, passages that you're interpreting to mean this in a number of ways. Right. But no, they are. Conv- I think I think it is a Schadenfreude. I think that. They need to feel special. They want to know that people that disagree with them are going to burn right. and yeah. be destroyed, and they're yeah. going to watch it happen. And that right. they're going to get the special treatment. They're, it's basically God's medallion status. And at the end of the day, <laughs> at, at, at the end of every story, almost every it's story we cover... It's boarding That's right. The, the end of almost every story we cover ends with the Jews getting it. Yeah. Ends with the Jews somehow and, paying the price. And yeah. they pay a big price in, in that narrative. Now, we're very fortunate that all of this, these amazing books and all this stuff has been translated into some of the world's greatest cinema. So, <laughs> yeah, so indeed. If you, if you have any fear of the rapture, if, you, you know, if it's, that's a residual thing, it's true. If it's a residual thing that's kind of stuck to your bones even though you've left, please do go to the god-awful movies and look up some of the Left Behind movies that they've covered. There's yeah, more do, than a few. Do some more. Do yeah. That's the further research. You will not on this. be afraid anymore. It you is. Will, you know you what scene? It. What scenes are never in that movie? Is is me going through the piles of clothing for some scratch? Yeah. You know what I mean? Gathering wallets up and watches. It just feels like it. Just feels like we would all. We need to make a post rapture movie where everything works where's out. It's amazing. Where yes. everything's just like... There's peace on earth. The trains run on time. Right, yeah. Women are paid the same. That's right. <laughs> we suddenly... suddenly <laughs> I mean, we have like a week and a half of like, holy shit, what does this mean? And then we all just collectively shrug and live our best lives. We, well, we collectively shrug, do a lot of laundry, and then life oh, I thought gets you were going to say do a lot of cocaine. <laughs> and, and a lot of... Co- well, that helps with doing a lot of laundry. Yeah. And then live in a perfected society That's right. forever and ever That's right. in the name yeah. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because there's no, uh, no bad atheists. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Well, with that true note, let's move on. Moving on. 